Will you pray with me? God, may the words that come from my mouth enter into this space across screens to be your word, your truth. And may your word meet each of us where we are. Amen. Friends, here we are, already on the third Sunday of Easter. Yet it was only two weeks ago we proclaimed together the words, Christ is risen, here in this sanctuary and through cables and routers across screens from the many upper room, our many upper room sanctuaries. Living words that continue to meditate our hearts and ever so gently pump the power of new life and hope and joy through us in each heart beat. That day, that holy day, I felt those hallelujahs reverberate throughout my body, the joy rush through my fingertips, especially, especially when I witness a whole lot of our faces on that screen, singing together, Christ, the Lord has risen today. And even with all of that power and that energy and the enormous love, it's amazing how quickly I returned to my routine. I woke up on Monday, I grabbed a cup of coffee and my laptop and opened up my to-do list. My mind already into the next week. Grateful, yes. Full, yes. And in the motion of what was to come and what I needed to get done. Robinson Pyle's trumpet and Peter Sykes's organ, unbelievable music that filled this space with divine energy and hope, slowly, slowly began to form a sacred memory that was yesterday. That was now two weeks ago. Time moves forward and it does every year and that's not a bad thing as we move through a liturgical year. And yet I know I need to remind myself that we are still very much in the resurrection season. And reading our passage today helped me. I found the words transporting me back to two weeks ago to our Easter service. And do you know what was the first memory that came to my mind? Sarah's conversation with one of our younger and wise Sunday school students, Lorraine. Acknowledging that Easter is mysterious, Sarah asked Lorraine, do we understand how Jesus came back to life? Lorraine confidently answered, nope. <laughs> Lorraine, thank you for speaking truth and wisdom into our service. There is so much mystery, and no, I do not understand. I know intellectually Jesus died and on the third day rose again. He returned to his community like he said he would, showing us that nothing, absolutely nothing, is stronger in this world than God's love. I can read biblical commentary after biblical commentary, theologian after theologian, and still not really understand with my whole soul this mystery. What does a rec resurrection mean for us? Our call as Christians. What does the resurrection mean that Monday after Easter service, three Sundays into Easter tide? Am I supposed to be doing something more? Am I supposed to feel something deeper within my bones beyond that holy day of hallelujahs when I would inevitably return to my to-do list, when my fingers would return to the keyboard? What does the mystery of the resurrection mean in between the emails, the phone calls, grocery shopping, cleaning, meetings, bills, and reading the news? What does it mean when 10 days, 
10 days after a glorious proclamation, 10 days after celebrating the news that Christ is risen, we hear about another. Another black man, Dante Wright, shot and killed by a police officer for simply being black. Another young, beautiful life with a whole future before him. What does Christ's resurrection mean as we await to hear the verdict of Derek Chauvin's trial, and as police shootings continue to amount even during his trial? Michael Leon Hughes, shot and killed. Adam Toledo, just 13 years old, shot and killed. What does it mean after another mass shooting takes eight lives at a FedEx warehouse in Indianapolis just a few days ago? What does Christ's resurrection mean when our hearts grow more and more tender? Our scripture today tells us that Jesus arrives to meet us right there in that tenderness, in that vulnerability, in that grief. He meets us and he says, peace be with you. With our hearts broken, with the tears streaming down our face, Jesus says, peace be with you. With the heaviness that sinks us deeper into despair, Jesus says, peace be with you. Greeting us, greeting his disciples with this warm, gentle peace. The disciples, afraid, hide behind a locked door. They do not know what to do, where to go. They abandoned Jesus, betrayed him, and then Jesus was crucified. And he died. In the midst of their guilt, their sorrow, their fears, their doubts, their hopes, Jesus meets them right there to say, peace be with you. He breathes and says, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive. The disciples then share this good news with the one disciple who's not present, Thomas. And Thomas wants and needs to see this for himself to believe, to believe it was really Jesus who returned, that it was really Jesus who extended this peace to them. Now, I know there's usually a lot of emphasis on Thomas and his doubt, although this doubt is not just unique to Thomas. In the Gospel of Luke, it is the women, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, who found the tomb empty. And there at the tomb, they were met by two men that gleamed like lightning that told them Jesus had risen from the dead. So the women then went out to tell the disciples, but the disciples did not believe the women. They needed to see for themselves. So we do not just see it in Thomas. The disciples, the other 11, had their moments of doubt. Yet Jesus meets them. We read that Jesus in Luke appears to the disciples as they were gathering, as they were talking about the resurrection and trying to make sense of it all. He greets them, much like this account we read in the Gospel of John today. Today we see Jesus meeting Thomas with the gentlest of presences, a uh, peace be with you. Knowing that Thomas needs the reassurance of a touch, Jesus invites him to place his fingers on his hands, to feel them, to bear witness to the holes in his hands from when he was nailed to the cross. And Jesus tells Thomas to not doubt but believe. Perhaps saying, do not doubt that I ever left you, but believe that I am always here. And I think, 
I think it is even possible to read this passage as not just providing proof so that Thomas believes, but maybe it is not all about doubt or belief, but about an invitation. An invitation that holds Thomas in his vulnerability, an invitation that opens the doors for Thomas to receive the grace of God, to reach out as he is able to feel with the touch the power of resurrection. I asked a dear friend if I could share a conversation she had with a brother at SSJE, St. John the Evangelist, an Episcopal monastery here in Cambridge. In one of our divinity school classes, we were talking about our prayer lives. My friend vulnerably shared how she feels like she can never play, pray right. She cannot sit still because she easily gets distracted and then is hard on herself. For when she looks around, it looks like everyone else seems to have this serene experience with prayer. And so she shared with us what one of the brothers from SSJE told her when she confessed this. And he said to her, Jesus wants to be with you in these moments. These moments of self-doubt, of self-criticism, of not knowing if you are doing the right thing or on the right path. He is reaching out to you now. In fact, he is especially reaching out to you in those moments. Those moments when you're holding that big, big box of greasy, delicious pizza that you, you just want to dive your mouth into, standing there in your underwear and unwashed stringy hair. Yes, yes, Jesus wants to meet you there. He wants to be invited into your home. He wanted to go back to the disciples again just so he could meet with Thomas. In all of our humanness, Jesus wants to meet you. Not just in those moments when you can sit still, when you feel like you got it together, when you exercise and eat spinach. But those moments, especially those moments of vulnerability, when we're not even sure what we need, Jesus wants to meet you. And he wants to say, peace be with you. Those pandemic days when all you can seem to do is shower, and that is a big accomplishment of the day, Jesus wants to meet you right there where you are and say, peace be with you. Not to change anything about you. When Jesus meets Thomas, he does not expect Thomas to want something different. He does not approach him with judgment. In fact, he invites Thomas to touch him which is exactly what Thomas needs. And we know that because Thomas just said a verse earlier, unless I put my finger in the mark of the nails, I will not believe. Jesus knows that Thomas is also in a place of grief. He lost his friend. He witnessed his friend be crucified, die a horrible death. And so when Jesus finds him, he says, yes, Place your finger on my hand, and in doing so, Thomas receives the good news of the resurrection. Good news that has not necessarily overpowered the Roman Empire, but has resurrected new hope, that has laid a foundation of for new beginnings, that has shown the power of God's love. Jesus is still with them, still with Thomas, even after death. There's so much to be done in Cambridge, in this nation, in this world. Every black or brown person who's not able to live their whole life as God intended is one too many lives lost. And I do not mean to suggest that Jesus is calling us to inaction today. I believe Jesus wants to meet us so he can tend to our souls. So he can tell you, I am here, I never left. No matter how much hope or faith we have in this moment, he will meet us with judgment, without expectation. All so 
that we may receive God's grace and love so that we, when we do act and do respond to all that is happening, we do so with God at the center. We can see a similar invitation in the Gospel of Luke when Jesus meets the disciples to say, See my hands and my feet, that is I myself. Touch me. Touch me and see. For a spirit has not flesh and bones as you see that I have. Again, I'm not sure if this is just about providing the disciples proof, but about an invitation. An invitation to remind us that Jesus is not unreachable. The risen Christ is not far beyond our hands outside of our homes, but is right here. This, this is what I think the power of resurrection can mean today. Death never took Jesus away. Even 2,000 years later, even if we lock that door, he will greet us. And he will say, peace be with you. Even as we hold really hard news, even when we hit rock bottom, even when we are on top of the world, Jesus wants to meet us right where we are. In your pajamas with coffee stains or in your nice, good-looking suit, his invitation has no barriers. Christ does not rank favorites among his disciples. At different times, they've all doubted, they've all abandoned, betrayed, and yet none of that matters. Christ meets them and says, peace be with you. Christ meets us not just so we can see him with our hearts, but so that we can receive God's love, warmth, and grace. So we can feel the presence of the Holy One within us. Blessed are the ones who have not seen, and I would say, blessed are all of you, for you have received an invitation. You have received the breath of the Holy Spirit. You have received the good news that Jesus wants to meet you. To answer my questions from the beginning, am I supposed to do something more? Not just yet. Am I supposed to feel something deeper within my bones beyond that Easter day? No, I am supposed to just be me, just where I'm at, so Jesus can tend to my soul. May the peace that Jesus shares carry you through. Carry you through the news of another life lost to gun violence carry all of us through to an imagined kingdom of justice and mercy. And yes, even carry us out of our beds on a dreaded Monday morning. May we remember that Jesus' invitation is always here. It will never go away. Jesus is not going anywhere. This is the power of the resurrection that we can always turn to well after Easter, well after even Easter tide, well into our everyday lives, schedules, and to-do lists. Jesus' invitation is here for each one of us. In doubt or faith, it doesn't matter. In hope or despair, it doesn't matter. Locked or unlocked doors, it doesn't matter. This invitation is yours to hold on to and cherish, to receive when and as you are able. To receive not just on Easter Day, but over and over and over again. As much as you need. This invitation is yours. Peace be with you.